Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Grand Theft Auto 3 Game Thoughts I rather like that after you spend a, a good deal of time working your way to a trusted position in the, you know, I guess Leone family, you know, the, the, the mobsters, the mafia, literally the last mission you're going, you know, you're, you're headed towards this car that you've been told to pick up and it's, it's nothing, do you? Well, you've been told to drive certain cars, you, there's, there's nothing particularly different, you know, go certain places, and suddenly the pager goes off, Maria tells you it's a trap, and you have to go get to Asuka. And literally, the first mission Asuka sends you on, you gotta go kill Salvatore the Yoni. That is just, that is fantastic, that is so subversive, so unexpected, and I love that after that, the game doesn't actually have you working your way to the top of crime families so much. You you know now you're working for Asuka, and then and and Kenji, her brother. Soon after, you start working for Ray, the dirty cop, and then Donald Love. And Donald Love actually has you kill Kenji. So it's it's no longer this, and and then after that you still work for Asuka, who I guess I think she's supposed to be dead there at the end of you know yeah she she's standing there whipping you know I I think it's it's supposed to be like a bamboo rod or something right and yeah just whipping Miguel to to get information about Catalina and then Catalina shows up and kills her and you know, abducts the, uh, yeah, Maria. It's, yeah, I, I really like that they do it like that. You've, you've gotten used to, in the game, working your way further up the ranks, and suddenly, you know, at the same time, you're actually working for two rival organizations, and there isn't so much of going to the top, you know, and, and working for Don Love is, is really cool. Getting, getting missions from the likes of Kyle MacLachlan and Michael Madsen. Seriously badass. They, they picked all the right people to play mobsters in this thing, seriously. Now, the... I do have a few minor things about the, the story. The thing with Maria, I get, you know, joke of, you know, at the very end, he kills her because she's complaining. I... I realized that she was kind of bratty before. Very spoiled, definitely. You, you see that right from the start. But she really hadn't been that since that like, first mission where you, you know, drive her around. I... You know, suddenly they push it into overdrive to get, like, a joke for the end credits. It just felt out of place to me. I, I get that. It, it's, again, it's subversive. You you know, you think, oh, riding off into the sunset with the fair maiden. Nope, he's going to kill her. And, you know, as a feminist, I'm not, I'm really not a fan of that. Anyway, I'm not going to get too into that here, though. This is not exactly a, a game that, you know, if, if I were to list all the things where this game is offensive, yeah, we'd be here all day, and that's really not, it's, yeah. Actually, actually that's, that's something I really love about the, the humor and the satire of this. It goes for everyone equally. Everyone's a target. I really, it's, yeah, it, it just, it goes for everyone that you would pretty much think of. It, it even satirizes the internet, which in 2001 really wasn't that... I mean, today everyone uses the internet constantly, but in 2001 it really was not as much of a, of a big thing as, as it is today, but, but yeah. But anyway, I do think that that shows that they did not have a lot to build on. They they really just had 
the the Casalina thing, and then you know you're working for these different crime people. At the end of the game, Donald disappears, Ray leaves, and what's his face? What's her face? Asuka gets killed. You know, can you you kill yourself? At the end of the game, there's I mean, it wraps up the story nicely. There's no one left to work for, basically. But at the same time, until, like, I heard Maria on the radio with, with the, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this new guy, he's kind of quiet, I don't know if he's serious. That's when I really realized, oh, she's supposed to be, she's really supposed to be a love interest because that really wasn't that. You meet her that one time, or you have that one mission with her. And you maybe meet her once or twice, relating to Salvatore, you know, something like that. And then she's hanging out with Asuka, and yeah, she's just, she's not a huge deal. I was also surprised that she got abducted. It's again, it's, it's almost like they didn't quite know what to do for the end. I, it makes perfect sense that you're killing Catalina and that she tries to double cross you and get, like, you know, ransom money, and so yeah, of course they needed some incentive for Claude to go meet Catalina, but Maria being the one, it feels a little bit underdeveloped to me. And then there are, of course, a few interesting continuity gaffes. I think, was it the, the Yardy? guy, the, 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 one of the phones where I got missions, the last mission there, I believe, was me going to a certain car, and once I get go into the car, there's literally a letter from Catalina that says, you know, ah, you will witness the true power of Spank. She's way too much of a villainess in this, like, most of it is played fairly straight or just for laughs, but it gets really silly, and it, it's not even like in a parody kind of way with Catalina. Like, you know, she's all muhahaha with that, and the, you know, ah, oh, you should have known not to trust me! Kill him! You know, just, yeah. Anyway, yeah, she, there's the letter, and then you have to fight off these guys who, you know, suicide bombers who are high on spank. <laughs> God love that. that that's, see, that's another thing where you know, parents can't complain too much about this game because, if anything, it says no to drugs. It's very much against the, the, the drug spank. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, Casalina set this trap, and yet when she meets me, when, when I fought my way through the cartel guards at the construction site and get up the lift, and she and Miguel is there, and that's the, you know, it's like the second or third time I see Kathleen and Miguel together, but it's the first time they become aware that I'm there. And she's like, I left you in a ditch for dead. Or I left you bleeding on the ground. That's referring to the start of the game. So, how exactly did that trap, I guess the idea was that I shouldn't have gone, you know, I shouldn't have answered that phone before the, the yeah, construction site cartel meetup, but the game didn't prevent me from doing so, so there's a little bit of a continuity gap there. Minor. Bigger one is that apparently Miguel knew, for, you know, she, he's getting whipped by, by Asuka. Apparently he knew that there were death squads out for Claude when literally the last time he spoke with Catalina was right around the time she even learned that Claude was still alive. So how could he know that she would send out death squads? That, yeah, but but on the whole, the, the story definitely holds up, as far as I've been able to tell. Now, the... I suppose that might more or less... I do want to just briefly throw... I, I really love Michael Madsen's call to Chatterbox. The, the, it, it's Tony. Tony's call 
to Chatterbox with the whole thing with, uh, you know, my name's real unimportant. Unimportant like, hey, I just got shot in the face unimportant. You understand me as, okay, okay, you don't need to tell me my name, you just tell me your name. And it's like, you know, my mom's always complaining and she's like, Tony this and Tony that. Well, Tony, Tony, how'd you know my name was Tony? Are you tracing this call? Cause if you are, no, 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 I, uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, just go on. Well, Tony this and Tony that. Well, Tony, I mean, sir. <laughs> That's fantastic. In general, just Laszlo is fantastic in this. At every conversation, I lose it when he mimics what's yeah the 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 you know the natural guy with the you know the Karate Kid as he calls him. Hey, Karate Kid, the desk is still in one piece. I'm just gonna talk like this. That's that's really funny, and and the the end of the <laughs> of the call with the 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 woman who's upset about video games. Laszlo, life does not have a reset button. Nope, but this show does. I love that button. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.